As we mark this somber anniversary of the 50th anniversary of the UT Tower shooting, we're talking about a new book, Tower Sniper, The Terror of America's First Active Shooter on Campus, with Monty Akers, Roger Friedman, and Nathan Akers, who have worked on the book. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. Our pleasure. Uh, on this yeah, anniversary. Uh, so much to get to in a pretty short period of time. So let's start about how this book came about. Uh, in 2014, uh, my son and I had been talking about writing a book together. We knew the 50th anniversary was coming up. Nathan's a big Longhorn fan, and we decided that that would be something that we would both be interested in. So at first, we just thought it was going to be history. Once we got into it, we discovered it was a much more complicated and layered tale. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the course of the next year or so, we talked to 15 or well, about 25 witnesses, about 15 of whom have never been talked to before, mm -hmm. found out some amazing things that have never been published before. And also cross paths with, with Roger, and, you talking about trauma and the after yeah. effects of something like And by pure serendipity, right. met Roger, who's a practicing psychologist in Maryland, who was a best friend of one of the victims, Paul Sontag, who was killed by Whitman that day. Uh, when he found out about the book, he jumped on a plane, flew to Austin, uh, was so interested he became a co-author. When, when we get 50 years beyond something like this, I'm, I'm kind of like you, Nathan, grew up Texas X, grew up coming to games. I heard the stories from something that happened nine years before I was born about the shooting and you're looking at the tower, but it's such a real event with obviously real victims and trauma survivors too left behind and that's kind of the angle where you took it from. Yes, yeah. You know, the, it's hard enough to absorb just the carnage, the death of, a, of an event like that. Uh, but beyond the death, there is uh, a traumatic impact on, on, on everyone that was present that day. Uh, the witnesses, the police, the first responders, um, the, uh, the reporters, and all of their families. Mm -hmm. So it's really thousands of people immediately affected. Uh, and, and uh, of course, that's occurring today, too, with all of the shootings. So it's, you know, it's, uh, the, these kinds of events are, are very public, but also very private, in the sense that it, it has a private effect on all those thousands of folks for all these years. And part of what's so exciting for me about Monday, this 50th anniversary, is, um, and the ceremony they're gonna have there, is that it's gonna, it's gonna be one of the, the first really open public times where uh, survivors, uh, people that were here at the time, plus current faculty and staff and Austin citizens, can come and pay their respects. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's an important, to me, an important starting of a kind of a public uh, uh, healing yeah, process. Half a century that's later. 50 years later. And, and exactly. Nathan, that's an important part. When you don't have the official public memorials, and, and it was almost like it was so well known, but no one officially talked about it. it so was, so, it, so it was, it's a different uh, it type of memory. That's yeah. right. Well, exactly. And you know, growing up in Austin, it's a story that um, a lot of us here in Austin think we know. Um, story no but what we really found is that a lot of the things are just below the surface that they really felt like uh, Charles Whitman um, got a lot of attention over the decades mm -hmm. and it kind of became Charles Whitman's story which pushed some of the victims to the side they felt pushed to the side and um, only now 50 years later you know it's a very important date because only now they're taking back the tower yeah. um, they're starting to get their stories put forward and it's a it's a shift in the legacy we really need to keep pushing forward yeah, not and not just those who were killed but those who were injured and the, like you said and, the survivors and the families and, their loved and the friends ones. Yeah. yeah and the loved ones yeah. and, and the popularly accepted explanation the brain tumor just wasn't true that's a yeah. very interesting yeah. piece yeah. of your uh, research in this book we didn't we didn't set out trying to disprove it but as we did our research we realized there were questions about a whether it existed at all and b whether it had any effect on him. And we contacted members of the Connolly Commission, the 32-member commission that was appointed uh, immediately after the event, two of the survivors, and they both confirmed that what they said about the brain tumor was kind of a compromise. Mm. So we turned everything that was known about the tumor over to one of the most renowned brain surgeons or neurosurgeons in America, and he, without any hesitation said it would not have affected him in any way. We'll get that in more in detail in the book. Mm -hmm. Sadly, uh, people, we really have never seen anything like this before on August 1st, 1966. Absolutely. We see it almost, and talk about it on this show, almost weekly now, uh, campus shootings and other mass shootings of this kind. What have we learned in 50 years, or where can we go from here to try to, to stop more of these events? Well, I, uh, that's I, an easy question yeah, to put to you. I don't have a know, quick answer. The, yes. the, the prevention's multi-layered, but an important thing we've learned is 
there needs to, the important thing we learn is that the significance of the event is not just in the event itself, but in the aftermath mm. and the impact of it on people's lives and the community. And when communities, uh, I think Virginia Tech is a wonderful example of a university that has really integrated the horror in 2007 that happened there. That was the, the next, that, that was, that's now the biggest campus shooting. Mm -hmm. um, they have a, a public memorial, they have an annual uh, celebration and, uh, of those that, that, that helped that day and responded. Uh, there, there is a, a f an actual uh, spot on their website and an organization of, uh, uh, of, of healing and support that the mm -hmm. university operates. And they do their own books, their own materials. So, so that the thing that we do know is there's got to be a public dialogue. And that, that's what, what's been missing here. Yeah. And it is starting today uh, on the 50th anniversary of the shooting and uh, a part of the narratives that are surrounding it, like your book, Tower Sniper, The Terror of America's First Active Shooter on Campus. I assume the book widely available online and yeah. in stores. Yes, it is. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We appreciate it.